back over there. Okay. Move, just move it right. There's one here. Welcome to Helen's Fish Camp on the shores of Lake LaBarge. Lake LaBarge is a pretty big lake, actually. Uh, for me, um, being out on, on the lake really brings you back. Um, you know, it, it made me think of the generations before me uh, who also traveled on the lake. And, um, and you know, and, and the importance of, of the Chinook salmon to our people. And, and really, it's about um, connecting with the land. And without that primary resource, then it really has a huge impact on our culture. And, and realistically, um, you know, I think that that's really the most important impact that the loss of uh, Chinook salmon has on us is, um, is the impact on our culture. And, and, real, and really, if, if we allow um, the numbers to continue to decline, then, um, then really we're going to be losing a part of our culture. And that is absolutely detrimental to, to the Tawanquichin people. This is like the time of year that the Tawan people used to fish and uh, need to keep this culture and heritage alive. That's that's what we're trying to do anyways because the fish, there's no fishing right now of Yukon River salmon. So, uh, so we purchased these salmon so that we could still teach the kids and uh, still have a bit of a fishery for the elders and still maintain this as a staple in their diet. Because the salmon fishery is limited right now, we've been asked to have extreme, to impose extreme conservation members on the Taunton citizens. And that's being asked all along the Yukon River, on the Yukon side anyways, by Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Hi, we're here in August 2013 at the shores of Ta'an Man, also known as Lake LaBarge. Uh, this is the area of Ta'an Kwachin Council people. But over the years of growing up here and learning more from the First Nations people, I realized that to, to a lot of people up here, it's more than just a fish that you can buy in a store. It's, it's all encompassed in the entire culture and beings of these people. And uh, as the numbers of salmon go down, uh, that culture sometimes can fade away. Uh, that we're trying to bring that back. We're trying to keep that a part of the people and a part of their culture. Kids get to cut them and, and look at the heads and you know the fish guts and the eggs. Hopefully, you know it's it's uh, it, it, everything is for the kids. So it's uh, it'd be pretty nice if we can get a few and they can share it with the feast and everything. So they know what the, the feeling, what it's all about, sort of a bit like what it's used to be. And do you remember what it, what it was like back in the day? Well, I'm not that old, but, uh, you know, it, the salmon has been declining for a long time now. And, and, uh, and you know, time goes on. I mean, right now, um, like I say, there was a, few, a bunch of us there. We didn't even really know where to set in that. But, you know, guys like Dennis and there's a few others, maybe five, have nowhere to fish uh, salmon in this lake. So they're losing it really fast. Eh? So hopefully we can get a few people learning where to where to fish and, and how to fish them. If I didn't have any salmon, it would be pretty sad because... Um, we won't be able to um, won't be able to help my elders 
seven give support food for our elders. Um, yeah, the elders really need the salmon. Really like eating salmon. If it wasn't for the elders, they wouldn't have been taught us uh, about how we get salmon and the traditional ways of getting salmon. I think, you know, if they can carry this on, stuff like this on, and, you know, teach, teach them a little bit about culture, at least they'll know a little bit about it, and if they're really serious about it, they can pass that on eventually as well, eh? Yeah. Even for the adults down here, there's hardly anybody fishing. I've been fishing here for a long time, and and like uh, the other day, they didn't even know where to set the nets for the salmon. So even the adults don't know. So you know, it's good to teach the youth because and show them at least where the fish are. When I was young, they told me just. You know, I, I'd usually, you know, get wood to 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 smoke the fish and, uh, and help them, you know, with row row the boat and help them to set the net and stuff like that. I don't. When I was young, I, I never cut the fish because they don't want me to spoil the fish. So, so, but it's good. At least they see what it's like, and and more practice, you learn more. I hope there's, uh, when you grow up, there's, there's still fish. Although we can go out and show, um, you know, the children how to set a net and things of that sort, um, we've actually had to um, buy salmon in order to teach them how to cut it and, and treat it and, um, and process it um, and dry it because, you know, those were, as I said, those are... Um, you know, uh, primary examples of our culture and, and what we have done historically as a people. In terms of what the impact has been on the Chinook salmon on the Alaskan side of the border as well as the Yukon side of the border, then realistically we're not going to have Chinook salmon anymore. So um, for me that's, that's really sad and, um, and it brings a tear to my eye to know that um, if we don't do something um, today, then my son who has just turned two may not know what it is to actually go out on the lake and, and have a salmon in, in his net. Our family is a big tradition about hunting and trapping with all the, um, all the stuff that my family teaches us. It comes from generations and generation, generations. Now today, our group gets to go and cut fish. Are you gonna have fun with that? So. Like the end result, they eat the dry salmon. It was so good. <laughs>
being thankful that you have food. The knife needs to go in the hole and then cut all the way to the neck. So that's how, I, so that's how you cut fish. Salmon are, they hold everything together like in, like in the forest, like they help fertilize the trees and they feed a bunch of animals. Say welcome to Culture Camp. Can I grab my drum? Can I grab my drum? No, Zach, what, Dad, when you go to Culture Camp, welcome to Culture Camp, do this panorama. Do this panorama. No, no. Like that. My name's Jenna and I'm to on Jen. <laughs> I'm Sharice Satija, I'm from Tana Kwachan, and I'm this year's youth leader. <laughs> I'm Kara, I'm from Tan Pachin, and now is a youth leader for my, the first time this year. I'm Stuart, and I'm First Nation. <laughs> I'm Jared Kane, Southern Shore and Clinkett from Ta'an, watching. Marla, come here. Oh, how's it Come. Come down, baby. Baby, come. Step down, step down.